In today's video, I'll be doing some troubleshooting on this Generac IQ2000 generator that I bought at Orchard Hardware when it was going out of business. This unit sells for around $800 at Lowe's and Home Depot, but I was able to get this floor model for $300 out the door. It was an absolute steal. The problem with this unit, even though it appears it was never operated, the engine will not start up. This generator has a 2000 watt surge rating and 1600 watt 13.3 amp continuous output rating at 120 volts and it uses an 80 cc overhead valve splash lubricated engine. The air filter is foam, the gas tank has a one gallon capacity for over five and a half hours runtime at 50% load and the oil used is 10W30. When I first started my YouTube channel years ago, I uploaded a couple of videos showing a very nice homemade inverter generator that I designed and used for over five years while living in the Bahamas. The videos have become fairly popular, so if you haven't seen those videos, be sure to click on one of the end cards at the end of this video. Okay, let's see if I can figure out why this generator will not start up. Before I get into the testing, let me give you a view of each side of this inverter generator. And I'm also going to open up this compartment so you can take a look inside. Let me open this up. Okay, pull that out of the way. Over here is where the spark plug goes. Over here is the overhead valve cover. Down here in the bottom right is where you check the oil. You simply unscrew this, pull it out, wipe it, push it back in, tighten it down, unscrew it again, and make sure the oil is up to the top of the hashed area on the dipstick. When I got this engine, the oil was crystal clear, but it was not to the full level, so I topped it off. Here is where the foam air filter is located. This is the intake hose going into the carburetor. Carburetor right here, of course. This is the carburetor bowl. This screw allows you to drain the bowl when you're going to store the unit for a long period of time. The fuel will drain right through here and out the bottom where you can capture it. Now let's take a look at the front side. This Generac inverter generator has this very nice front panel. Over here is your fuel gauge. It illuminates from empty to full. Over here is time remaining at a given load. It will automatically calculate how much time is remaining with the amount of fuel that's left inside the tank. Over here it may be hard to see but there's also a few more indicators. This is a low oil indicator. Over here is a temperature indicator. And I think this could be an overload LED. And this machine is also designed to be used in parallel with another one of these. So if you'd like to have a lot more current you can parallel two of these generators together. Now over here there's different modes. There's a standard mode, an economy mode, and a turbo mode, depending on what you're going to be using. If you just have a light on with a TV, clearly you would have that on the economy mode. If you're going to have a few more things, it would be standard. And if you're going to be using all kinds of power tools, more than likely you would have that set to the turbo mode. Over here is a bar graph indicator. Depending on how much load is being used, at this receptacle, you're going to see these illuminate. So if you're running right around 1600 watts, it's going to show 100%. If you're at 800 watts, it'll be somewhere in the middle. In the event the load is excessive, you can reset right over here. When the unit was purchased, I opened the fuel cap to look inside to see if there's any evidence that there was fuel in this before I purchased it. And I also smelled inside here and did not smell any vapors of gasoline. Over here is an on-off switch, which more than likely is to allow air to enter as fuel is being drawn out of the gas tank. And you can see there's a filter screen at the bottom, and I just topped this off with fresh gasoline. Here's a look at the opposite side of the generator. Recoil start. And there's a three position switch. One is the starting position. This is where you put it to number one, like this. Once that's done and you have the fuel cap put to the on position, you pull the recoil. 
once the engine starts up then you move it to the number two position when you want to shut the engine down you rotate it to the number three position and then you can also store it in that position over here you can see the exhaust and if you look very closely which is hard to see on camera the entire exhaust assembly in here you can see a little bit of a shine from the metal through these louvers has no indication at all that the engine was ever run it's uniform in color there's no discoloration you can see what appears to be like a steel wool inside the exhaust opening and the purpose of that is to prevent unburned gas from igniting inside the exhaust system and having a flame shoot out the exhaust. Air is drawn into the engine in this area right down here. The generator has four vibration dampening adjustable rubber feet. Alright so the first thing I want to check is to make sure we have spark at this plug. I made sure the gas cap is to the on position and I also made sure the three position switch on the opposite side is set to the number one position for starting the engine. Let me pop this off. Now this test is going to help me rule out that there's a problem with the stop switch on the engine as well as the ignition coil or magneto more than likely. Okay, using the 13 16 inch spark plug socket, let me reach in. And let's take that plug out. You can see the ceramic as white as can be. No indication of this engine ever running. Let me put the spark plug back in here. And take this. And let's connect this to the engine ground. And we're going to take a look right over here to see if the sparking makes it from the electrode through the ground wire to the engine. Here we go. And you can hear the spark when it was jumping. And you more than likely on camera could have seen it between the electrode and the tip. So we know everything is fine here. Now I'm going to thread it back into the hole and go on to the next step. Okay, this is all back together. We ruled out spark as being the cause of why this generator does not start up. We know compression is not going to be an issue because this is a brand new engine. Valves should not have to be adjusted either. To adjust the valve clearance, you're going to do it with the engine cold. You're going to remove the four nuts holding down the valve cover. Right here you can see the two valves with the rocker arms. You want to rotate the engine until the springs are fully decompressed. Both need to be at the highest position. When they're at the highest position, the piston will be at the highest point in the cylinder on the compression stroke. Using a feeler gauge between 0 0.08 millimeters and 0 0.12 millimeters that's lightly lubricated, you're going to insert it between the contacts and you should feel a light drag. Using a small combination wrench and needle nose pliers, you're going to have to adjust that gap to the right clearance. Once everything's adjusted and tightened down, you're going to rotate the engine a couple of revolutions, and then you're going to recheck. If everything is fine, you're going to inspect the valve cover gasket. If there are any tears, apply a thin film of RTV silicone sealant and reinstall the valve cover. It's as simple as that. The thing I want to do is I'm going to take off this cover down here. And after I do that, I'm going to take some propane or butane and feed it directly into the intake tube, which is right here, leading into the carburetor, and then try starting the engine up. If it does start up, that's going to indicate a problem between the fuel tank and the carburetor, or a problem with the carburetor. So let's give this a try first. Here's the foam filter. The tube is right here. So let me take some of this butane. I'm going to inject it up inside that tube leading into the carburetor. And then I'm going to pull the cord. Let's give it a try. OK. 
Okay. Okay, as you just saw, it started up perfectly. So now we're going to move on to the fuel tank. Before I move forward, I'm going to remove this entire panel so we could look inside much easier at the fuel tank and the carburetor. With the cover removed, you can see everything very clearly now. Here's your fuel tank. This is the fuel sender going to that LED gauge I showed you earlier. And these wires come from the sender to the control panel. Now I'm going to move the camera in a minute to show you, but right down here, you can see me pulling on that. This is the hose from the fuel tank that leads into the carburetor. Now before it gets to this point, it comes out of the bottom of the fuel tank and it goes over to that three position knob on the other side of the generator. When it's in number three position, it turns off the flow of fuel. When it's on number one or number two, fuel can flow through that switch and then it goes into a fuel filter and then it goes to right here where it connects to the carb. Let me reposition the camera so you can see everything very clearly. Okay, right here you can see the fuel filter, it's red. That is connected after the switch where the arrow is pointing. You can see there's a fuel line going into the switch and going out. So if that's not working properly, fuel will not make it from the gas tank into the carb. If the filter is blocked, that would also prevent fuel from getting into the carb. So what I'm going to do is come over here and you can see that line. I'm going to crimp that line with a special tool. I'm going to remove the green clamp and I'm going to place it into a cup. Then I'm going to open up the gas tank cap, rotate the knob over here that the valve is connected to, to the run position and we're going to see if fuel runs out of that line easily. If it does, then I'm going to have to remove the carb next to do an inspection. But if it doesn't, I'm going to have to check out that switch to make sure it's working properly. You see I have this special tool that squeezes the fuel line. The clamp has been disconnected. I'm going to pull this away and then I'm going to place it inside of this small glass. And I'm going to open up this clamp to see if the fuel flows directly out of the hose. So right there, the switch is still off. Let me rotate the switch. And the switch is back off. Alright, so that's good. We just ruled out the switch. It's going to flow about that rate because it is going through a filter. Now that I verify the switch is working, I'm going to have to remove the carburetor to perform an inspection. Okay, let me just grab this. Move it to there. Pull these out of the bottom. This is the drain going right over here. And that's this one. Get that out of the way. Okay, let's get in here now. Mm, this could be a bit of a problem sliding it off. Hopefully not. Let's see how it goes. All right. Okay, and as you can see, with this pushed down, I could slide this only so far before it hits the gas tank. A real pain in the neck. Let me work on getting this removed. Once it's removed, we'll take a closer look. Okay, you see I got the carb off finally. The only way to do it was to disconnect this hose by popping it out of the air box and lifting up very hard on the gas tank. It releases when you pull up hard enough. After doing that, I was able to slide it all the way to the side. Let me disconnect the cable now. Then I'm going to take this outside and we're going to open it up and see what the inside looks like. Okay, I'm now outside. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of noise. And here is the carb. Better look at it. I don't know why this would not be working well, but something is blocked up. Let me take apart over here the bottom, this whole bowl, so we can take a look inside. 
Okay, took it apart. And very oddly, for a machine that was never used, there's a whole bunch of crud in the bottom of the bowl right there. You can see the sides look pretty good. But there is debris there. And you can see the end of the bolt has some crud on it. Everything inside here looks good and clean. But this is all filthy here. And look at this mess right in here. So let me clean all this out with a very tiny little wire. And then put it all back together and see hopefully if it gets the engine to run. Okay, the bowl is nice and clean again. And I cleaned all this with carburetor cleaner and a brush. And you can see this hole is blocked. And that's why the fuel is not finding its way in. Let me get in there with a very fine wire and get that hole nice and clean, flush it out, put this back together, and hope it works fine. You see all that crud. I guess when the factory tested this, gas was left inside, and when it sat there for over a year, this is what happened. So let me make sure that's all the way through. You can see it right inside there. We'll put a light on so you can see it. There you go. Alright, so at least it's clear now before it was totally blocked. Alright, let me hit this with the uh, carburetor cleaner again. Flush it out. Okay, slide that all the way back in. This is all connected back exactly the same way. We route these wires properly. Okay, push that in. That's good. Right on. Okay. That's all the way back. Okay, it's all back together. Let me cover all this back up and give it a try. Okay, let's try it. Let's switch it over to start. Make sure the fuel is on on. And that is it. As you can see, working good. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.